<clears throat> All right, there we go. This is important. If not, sorry, it won't be in there for you later. Like everything but no audio. All right, so we're actually getting started today. Uh, we're taking a look at this course. Actually, at the top. So this information, of course, is here for you to read later and also for me to remember what we can talk about if I don't skip any. You'll find just a bit in my other courses that people tend to get off track or jump around. And then I thought I could miss, you know, then I'd miss things totally I didn't talk about. So this is to keep me on track. Um, so first off, you're in the, the right place by preparing for your career. We're broadening your answer. Second, if you're getting into fiber, we already talked about that. Numerous jobs, numerous career opportunities, and, and which we'll take a look at. But first, are you really ready for a career in tech? Um, of course, the answer to that should be no. <laughs> if you're ready, then you probably should just go get a job. And so, uh, what I'm mentioning here is that those that, and I mentioned this before, those that choose a career in technology related to it, whatever it is, not be, uh, they tend to be the people that are implementing new technology, fixing problems, maybe in other people's jobs in the future. But you have to be somebody that really loves learning new things about that. And that's a specific thing. So I don't like learning new things in everything. Like learning new things with technology. So that's one of the things you have to do. I will have people that will come in and see technology and they're like, well, the real motivation is I want a job that's not going to disappear on me. I want a job that I can do and not all of a sudden when my job's done. And so they they really don't have that. They tend to really don't care too much about it. It's, it's hard. It's harder for a person that doesn't have an interest in it. To switch all the time. Oh, we're doing this now. We just upgraded this software. Oh, we're going to do this with the server now. People that love that, no, sweet. Let's do that. Let's just not do it tomorrow. Mostly, those people love gadgets. If you look at what's below that, is people that. Love technology. So you have to ask yourself, you know, do you love the new OS upgrade or the latest game system or phone that comes out? You know, those are usually indicators, right? There's a lot of people that love a new phone coming out, and really they just like to walk around with the phone. That's not the same as, oh, I love the new phone coming out because what does it have? What does it do? Augmented or virtual reality, is that something that you might go back to the cool that's coming out? I don't see that. I'm not that kind of person. I want to buy a virtual reality system just so that I can experience it, mess with it, and then probably after a year I would just buy more of this and it's fine with my life. That's right. I love it. <clears throat> All right, so here's the big thing. This this should be in the notes. So to succeed in IT or IS, which is information technology, information systems, same kind of deal, you must learn how to connect concepts together. Uh oh, group study. And, and uh, I know you're thinking, uh, don't you do that in anything? Yes, it's true. But I end up with a lot of students that really love those gadgets, and they have learned by doing. They've always learned by doing and messing around and doing. Well, when you get to the point where you're going to have a career in the field, you can't just learn by doing or messing around. That's still something that you will do. I do it. It's very normal for IT people to have virtual machines running on their computers or two or three computers that they're using uh, because they are always messing with stuff. However, they have to read articles have to read concepts of the new stuff to the old stuff. They have to do that. And, and so I'm trying to get you prepared for that. You have to be able to learn to connect concepts. 
You must be dedicated in your studies so you can gain the knowledge across different areas. So what I'm basically telling you is that school here serves a dual purpose. There's a bunch of stuff you need to know about technology, and that's why you're in class. But you also are learning how to study well, because you're not going to just come to school, study a whole boatload of stuff, and then go out and never have to ever look at anything again. Not in technology. Those jobs do exist. So they go, oh, I have to do some changes. Now. Yeah, we have a new card system. Oh, wow. wow. The, their job doesn't change that much. It really doesn't. But in technology, it does change. And so you have to know, okay, this is how I study, and I continue to do that. Sure, it is not based on grade. It is not scheduled for a certain time. But if we just surprise the tech department out here, of course, this is the beginning of the year, so it's not a good time to do that. You're probably not in there. You're probably all over the campus. But in a couple of months, if we were to just walk through, half of the people you would see sitting there reading information on their screen, checking out something, they're doing the job. But they have to know that stuff. So getting good steady habits. And of course, you have to have a desire to put those concepts into practice to actually use them. This one I throw in there because I know a lot of people in tech, and they don't have to. They strut around and act like they know everything. <laughs> Lastly, you have to be more concerned about getting it right than being right. A person that works in technology, one of the most awesome things about good ones or great ones is that they'll stand there and go, whoa, I've never seen that before. Who check that out. I have no problem telling you I have no idea why that's happening. It's my job to figure it out. So I'll go figure it out. I'll come back and we'll, we'll talk about it. The worst ones are like, oh yeah, that's what this is. Let me just, yeah, that's what this is. Oh, I screwed it up more. Yeah, that's this isn't behaving right. So I'm just gonna, I gotta do some other stuff. And they won't admit that they have no idea. The person that they're talking to, you kind of know that. Yeah, you kind of pick up on it. You know, like, oh boy, I hope this person doesn't come back. Oh. Right, because they're just, they're lying to you. I don't want to hear that. There's a lot of people in tech that do that. Oh, well, uh, this is, yours is, uh, well, it's not that, it's, uh, it's not on the latest update. That's why it's not doing what I want it to do. Right, so you have to be more concerned about getting it right. Oh, wow, this is not looking right. <laughs> Let me go figure it out and I'll come back. All right, so just a few notes. Uh, this is uh, this is the stuff we're going through. So right down at the bottom, I always I put that in red to remind me. We're going to talk about right now the difference between high school and college uh, because there's been some changes in education that put you in a situation. Let me just say you have a harder than I do. I'll just put it that way. So yeah, when I was in high school, I had it harder than you. But the goal was back then, even in high school, we need to teach you how to think. And there wasn't a big overlord watching that. And now with the federal government getting in, I don't know if you know this, but usually when the federal government does something, they just screw it up. Mess it up. We actually have a pretty good motivation to do that. Uh, but most are just, it's just awful. Okay. In any case, there's things that you've had to go through in high school for most of you, not all of you, and they've gotten you in a certain pattern. And then when you come to college, uh, it's just like, what, what do I do? How do I succeed? I don't know. Because you're asking me to do stuff that I didn't do, I haven't done. And so that's kind of the first principle there. Attending class does not equal understanding or passing in class. So you may have had high school teachers that began through the course. There's like 52 assignments in that course. You got an L, but somehow you get four and you got to see it. You don't have to have too much kids. You know? um, yeah, let's, let's move you along. 
let's get you going, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's not the way college works. You're not going to do that. You're not going to have a bunch of assignments in each class. And then you go, right, can I do these three in the past? I don't know, maybe do them and let's see what your score ends up being. Oh, field in pass, sorry. Yeah, that's the way it works because that's how life works. Whereas right? you can't go into your boss and say, I didn't do five of the things you asked me to do. So can I still have my job? Um, how about no? I'll get somebody else to do it, right? But they're under the gun in high school. So we're going to take a look at why. You know, why is that happening and how you have to try to shift, especially in the first semester. That makes the job harder. It really does. After a while, so we're going to take a look at differences in high school and college right now, and we're going to take a look at why education is so higher ed. Why is this so confusing? Uh, and we will look at that NDAS, what that means to those guys, and how to be successful overall. So if I go home here. Right here, that's what we just did. This is Monday's lecture. You'll always have the lectures at the top. So we're going to take a look at some of the differences between high school and college, and then we'll jump down to the bottom where the assignments are. Because then you'll notice, hey, that's got an assignment associated with it. All right, so first off, dealing with stress. This is something I've noticed over the past 15 years. I talk to people about this and they don't they don't I, I don't about how our society has changed so for the better and for the worse. Stress is normal, don't let it control you. You're gonna deal with stress the whole life. Every morning when I wake up, there's a certain amount of stress. I love what I do, I'm prepared for my classes. Why the heck am I stressed? Uh, that's that's the way that works. Stress is normal, and and it's it's also something that can get out of hand. Uh, you, you can let it control you. Okay? Don't let it stop you. Let it motivate you to get things done. That's really why stress is there. You you start to feel anxious and stressed about something. It shouldn't stop you. It should say it should motivate you. I tell my kids all the time. Like when I've I've been in education taking classes. I've been education, not teaching, right? I've been taking classes in some form or another, prepping for a certification, all the way up to about four years ago. I finally got a break and I was just doing that with my life. You're talking about your age all the way to my age of taking certifications, taking courses, all those years. So having done a lot of it, I would always tell my kids, let that anxiousness and stress motivate you to get your work done, because that's what I want. I get that work done, and now I'm not stressed about it. The stress is over. Got it done. Now I can chill and do what I want. Instead, a lot of people will go, oh, I'm feeling over stress, so let me ignore it, and I'll go do something else, and I'll try not to think about it. And then if the stress builds more, because now I haven't thought about it, I'm not prepared for it, the stress builds more, then it it's not Why do you think that is becoming a bigger thing in our society? Any idea? I get more of an issue than it is. Well, because there's so many distractions. There's so many ways that you can get past the one that is not. Yeah, that is a huge thing. That is true. Right, so that's a challenge that all of you have to face that I did not face. You realize how boring my summers were? Holy crap, it was not easy. And what are you going to do to solve that? Nothing. <laughs> right? We live in Arizona. Should we go outside? It's 120. Although I did once a child who never gets home, my father in the pool. Yeah, you don't bad. say anything. You just leave the room. Oh, yeah, those are tabby. I'll have more. Well, that's what you're going to do because I don't want to listen to it. Anyway, um, that is a huge thing. We have so many ways that we can just go, I don't want to think about that. But it's easy to do things like that where when I was young, that just dealt with it. Nothing else to do. 
No, that's true. Any other ideas? Why? And I think it's more. I think that's. I think that is one of the negative from the positive technology. But because technology gives us more, there's more places to be safe. I've got one that I haven't been yet. So I'm going to tell you a quick story <clears throat> about one of my grandparents. One of them. And then a little bit about me. Then we'll, we'll kind of get to that here before we go. So, all my grandparents had to go through the depression and World War II. And all of them had to do it. One of them on my mom's side, his parents both died when he was probably about. All the kids, his brothers and sisters, they get farmed out to different relatives. It's not bad. Uh, gets farmed out to a really nice relative, which he loves, but the government decides that those relatives are too old. And they send them to some younger ones. And they treat him like a farm boy. So I'm not joking. He lives in the barn and he does work there. So no surprise at 15, he heads out. 15 years old. And he's like, I'm out. Why would I work for you for nothing when I can go get a job someplace and make money? So he leaves at 15. That sounds pretty stressful. That was pretty stressful having to deal with people that should love you to treat you like a farm animal. He learned at a really young age what he could do. Why? He was forced to. He didn't have a choice. Had to do that. He retired around how much money? Probably around 50. And he probably had a million, maybe a million, something. Now, I won't describe my other grandparents and my other grandfather, but he, he, he retired around the same age and a half. And to me, why much of that happened was because they learned really young. I can do that. I can do that. Because the stressful situation they were in is I do it or I starve and die. And that's a huge amount of stress to place on some kid. Okay. Now, my parents' generation, my dad didn't have as much stress. But let me tell you, having uh, parents <laughs> that had a lot of stress, by the time he's 10 or 11 years old, he's, charged with, he's in charge of part of the farm. That's yours. You got questions to ask. Of stress. Then you get to me, right? What do I have to deal with? I have to deal with bullies in school, you know, stuff like that. And not, not as much stress. You guys don't even have to deal with bullies in school. And, and I, my thought process is if you have to deal with something really stressful when you're young, then you become somewhat immune to it as you grow older. Because it's like, it's sort of like saying, I've been through the crap. So this is not worth the now. And it lessens the stress. So society has gotten more complicated in so many ways, but in one way it hasn't is all the ease that's given to us makes it so we're pushing stress further back into our life. And then as you get to be your age and adult, it's like, how do I deal with this? Because you didn't have to deal with it as much. I did not have to deal with it as much as my grandfather. Did. That is the truth. I listened to their story. And, and, uh, but it made them solid. And that's why they were always kind of like that. Like, you watch some of those old movies? Why don't you just do it? You know, they have this attitude like, get off your butt and get going. Because uh, they, they learned that they could. But the people they're talking to are like, I don't know, I don't know what are you talking about? And so realize that, realize that you haven't, there's probably a lot of stress you have gone through. There's things that stress that you've had to deal with that I haven't been with. Facebook is bad. Somebody should be on Facebook until they like so much people. And then talk about a world of stress. You know? But anyway, there's things you deal with, but there's other things you haven't. And so that does make it harder for you to have to deal with it now. 
right? So when I went to college, it's like, well, yeah, some extra stress is on me, but how is this different than what I did in high school? It's not. So it's kind of just a continuation of the same thing. All right, now we're going to get in. Uh, oh, I should mention this. Late night is your enemy. Stop doing that. Part. I've seen some excellent students come through here and um, and fail because they miss classes. <laughs> and then you ask them why. Where's the new guy? They're like falling over to sleep in the one. You know, fourteen a.m. You are there from fourteen to get up at four a.m. Don't get to not sleep. Don't get to no sleep. I swear that right there for all the general students, like across the U.S., going to colleges and universities, that is the thing that kills most of them. They believe what they saw on TV that you go to college and you do all this party and you have all this fun, and then you show up to class and you still pass. That doesn't happen. That's one of the things you learn to do. You've learned by that. Forget it. Sleep is my friend. Um, so actually, I don't have too many people that are majors that have that issue. I have a lot more of the just general ed students. They have a lot of that come and come and come and then two months in they just start to disappear and stop doing work. And that's all because they just give up on they, they just they don't their brain is not with them so they can't figure out stuff. The stress now gets more and then they go, well oh, screw computers and we focus on email. You have to cut and run Anyway, uh, just real quick, this is the high school situation. There's lecture, there's worksheets. They give you concise study guides, and then you test. And that, that's not necessarily different than it ever has been. What's different is with the government constantly looking at them, they tighten money to student success. So if the school doesn't have a successful student, they cut their funds. Now, the problem with doing that is then that is the carrot, right? It's leading the horse. And if my pay is tied to your success on this, I'm going to make sure you pass that. Now, that does not necessarily include knowing how to fix or figuring out a problem or looking through a chapter to figure out what the most important parts are. Yeah, that's what businesses want me to be able to do. Because someday they're going to go, can you take care of this big problem? And they don't want you coming to them and going, well, how do I do that? Right? And that's how that stuff links together. You look at information, you study stuff, you go, oh, this class, this person is really smart about this. You do all that stuff. So if you were in a school that actually didn't really give you a concise study guide so that you could pass this test, then you're better off. You're better off for it. But if you were in a school that did that, well, that's a huge amount of stress. Test. Make sure that you pass that class. So what happens in college? We have lecture. You have a lot more writing assignment. You'll do, if you have a study guide, if you have one, which I don't give them, uh, it'll be huge. And then of course you have to take it. So you still you're left with that, I gotta figure out what in this the teacher's going to actually test me. That's what she's going to do. <clears throat> So the difference there, following rules in high school, choosing responsibility in college. That's, that's a huge difference. That pretty much sums it up. In high school, it's like, what rules do I have that I have to comply with? And that's because you have to deal with older people that don't want to learn anything. And you have to do that for those people, so you're kind of stuck in the tube. That's what happens. And in college, it's like, well, you have to be responsible and figure out what you're going to do in high school. So, high school mandatory, usually free. College voluntary and it's expensive. And that's that's true. Just real quick. Any guess as to how many students that start college actually finish a two-year program? Five. No, I'm 
español, el único que Forty percent of the people that actually go to college out of high school, there's usually only about this way. You think about twenty percent of people that come out of high school to go to college. I know. So 20% actually go to college, and only 40% of those actually finish. And you'll notice that in the spring, you'll go, wow, it's kind of more empty. But it's not for me. And of course, usually why it's not for them is because they didn't sleep. <laughs> they didn't realize that they had to do stuff that the teacher was not even to study out of. All those things are just like, they get bombarded with it, but school's not for me. School's for anybody that's going to stick with it. That's why it's valuable. Now, out of the people that do graduate, how much higher is their pay than the people that didn't do anything? Yep. Yeah. 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 So you got a high school diploma and then you get a two-year degree and you're getting paid 40% more. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Now guess what the jump is? This is a two years. Guess what the jump is if you finish your bachelor's? It's another degree. That's 40% higher than those. Now once you get to that point, then it really depends on you. In other words, you, you can't say, I'm going to get a master's and I'll make 40% more for the bachelor's. No, it depends on the field. But this field doesn't require a master's unless you want to go into management. As a matter of fact, as we're going to look at, you may not even need a full degree depending on what you choose. You have to read in the right place. That's, it's going to pay off for you. Lots of debates on whether or not school is you know, higher ed is more than truth is it's like the statistics show. You're looking for more money and more opportunities that you go to that. Anyway, your time is very structured by others uh, when you're in school and high school, and now you have to manage your own time. That's why I'll tell people if you got a downtime and study, get that crap out of the way so you're not stressed. Don't take that attitude. Nah, it's not due to you. Just get it done and get it out of the way. And then your stress level goes down and you get back. You know, you proceed from one class to another. But often at, at college, and you know this, this is what I, one of the best things I love. You go to college and you just have these massive sections of like nothing. And I will have high school kids. That will tell me in some of my gift classes, they'll say, I can't believe I took English 101 and I got all that done in the semester. And in high school, they do it in It's like, yeah, well, that's not high school's fault because they have to deal with all those people that don't want to do anything. So they're constantly trying to herd them to do it. And you know, it's done. Then the distractions that are in everything else they're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and like so you get to, you know, Decide what you want to do. Arrange your own schedule. Uh, graduation requirements are complex here, where here it's not. It's like, hey, you're now junior. Would you like to take an elective? <laughs> you know, these, we got these two. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, so we'll actually, that's why we're going to go through this information this week on, yeah, colleges are complex. And there's reasons for it. So the guiding principle is in high school, they'll usually be told what to do and corrected if they don't. In college, they'll be expected to just take responsibility for what you need to do and learn that your, your actions have consequences. So most of your instructors at EAC, I'm going to be honest with you, are really nice. If you were at a university right now, they would probably, the instructor probably wouldn't talk to you. 
we have to copy it to them. And then they'd be like, well, I get paid regardless of the amount. So whatever, I don't care what you copy. And that tends to be their attitude. And they're like, well, that's a consequence for not becoming the class. So, really. Now, you will have some teachers here at EAT that will take that attitude. Like, if you mix like 17 assignments, there's some teachers that will be like, sorry, I'm not reopening. Me, I'm like, sure, try. There's all those assignments open. You know, because I know 2% of those, when they get their ass out, they'll, they'll make it. The other 98% does so much work for them. Thought I did check. Right, we're 15 weeks in a semester. This is all stuff you can look at, and we'll show you why you want to look at. But the guiding principle, um, you know, you should be told in class what you need to do, what your assignments are, how to you know, focus on this, focus on that. Uh, in college, here's some material. Read it, figure it out. And the higher you go up, I can tell you, having done it, the higher you go up, the more that principle applies. You get to a master's level, and they just go, there you go. Here's this vague question. Write five pages. What does this guy want? What does she want? I don't know. You just have to figure it out. And then uh, high school teacher, college profession, high school teaching environment, which you acquire facts and skills. Now that is fundamental. At that level, it's facts and skills. You need to know these facts. You need to have these skills. Because once you go on to college, then we start talking in more vague terms. So you, we're assuming you have the facts and skills. Right? That's why in, the, in our computer area, like I talked about before, we have to start lower. Oh, wouldn't it be awesome if you were like the East Coast and you guys all knew all these concepts that were in 103, right? Because they were taught to you in high school. And we would go on with something else. That's a class of facts and skills because it's not common. You take responsibility for your thinking through applying what you learn. And then tests how are they different? Mastery is usually seen as the ability to reproduce what you were taught. I'm a high school teacher, so let's get math, right? Because math is a certain principle that you have to learn. But in everything else, I'm trying to teach you history. So I'm going to teach you these facts, and now I want you to say the same thing back to me. And then that says we were taught something. Mastery is often seen as the ability to apply. That's why I try to have labs. Hey, you learned all these facts. Now it's actually time to put it to use. And I'll tell you that is a match for a number of most students these days. They're like, well, what? I learned all this stuff about the motherboard, and now I got to put one in. Right? Because I'm, I'm seeing if you can apply with it. And that's not something the students used to. They're like, aren't you just going to stand up there and show us where to put the screws in, show us how the board is oriented, show us where everything's connected, and I'll just follow along. Because that is what they have spent their life with. Why would they expect anything different? That's what I mean. It's just huge. Yeah. But all of a sudden, you're being asked to do something. Grades are a big deal. Grades are um, <clears throat> much different. In high school, effort counts. I can see you're working hard. Courses are usually structured to reward good faith effort. You work hard enough to earn a C, but the reward is a B. I saw they really, really tried. I don't know. Uh, but at college, results count. So good faith effort is important. In other words, professor, and this is true, speak with people. So if you're working your butt off trying to do something in any class in college, the instructor or professor will be more inclined to help you figure things out. Because they can see you just trying to do it, and it's just a struggle. They can't see you doing any of that, then you know, hey, so, uh, that's why it's important to talk to your professors and all that. We keep them out of the way. All of a sudden, you get COVID. I have COVID. Well, my whole family has COVID, but 
weeks. Absolutely not. You need to let them know that stuff. Because at EAC, they'll be willing to help you. Other places will be like, I know what I mean. <laughs> oh. All right, so willingness to help you achieve the result, which we can see me working. But it will not substitute the results in the grading process. Work hard enough to earn a C and we'll be rewarded a C. Just the way it is. So they're not likely to do that that they've done in high school many, many, many times. It may have even happened to you. Now take these three tests and write this special paper. And now you've got to be in class. But nobody's doing that for you. You have to, they'll go, yeah, here's all the work, get it done. Because it's not fair to some other student that somehow you get seven assignments you got to do, and they have to do 20. Not so many people. So be aware that that is much different. Questions, comments? Uh, stuff you guys want to throw in, your own experiences from. High school. <laughs> Rest is useful. He is. Oh, go on. I'm here. So, during the season here, so also did soccer on my school. No, you know what? I'm going to have to work with that for a while. So, it's like, this report years ago so almost I was a little older than you guys probably about 10 years old and they did this this investigative report you know, when they were 60 minutes old, on geniuses so kids were that were super geniuses that, that got their master's in 60 and stuff like that and so they went back after several years to talk to the people so they described this kid and the media that had followed them at the time and then they went back to talk to in all cases that they show, these kids weren't geniuses. They just went to school and studied. I didn't. Went out. Studied. Went to bed. Woke up before school, studied. Went to school, came home, studied. One hour. Right? They were pushed. That was not their choice. They were pushed by their parents to do that. In other words, instead of what we do, they were doubling or tripling the time of learning. And so you're like, ah, these genius kids who can learn anything. And now when they're older, they're telling you, yeah, I'm studying. Oh. I'm like, what are you doing now? Doing what I want. <laughs> That's the most I'm going to say. I'm doing what I want. Well, what is that? Well, I'm this busy person every afternoon. They did not go and solve you know, problems of you know, cohesion or anything like that. Because they, they weren't people that, you know, because you do see them. So, the point of that, you will be successful. Spend the time learning it. You will. Unless you've got a mental problem, in other words, you can't read correctly, or you're like my oldest boy, who has cerebral palsy, those things that he can't understand. For instance, the time of day. What date it is, what month it is, time is That's no clue. He's always been that way. Been that way forever. Uh, money. He knows a little more about money than us. But to him, $100 and $199 is the same thing. That's a huge difference. A thousand is the same as $1,900. And we could teach him all day long and have it for about five or ten minutes. 
who has a mental problem that causes him not to be able to learn certain things. None of them have that. Meaning, if you put in the time, you can get there. You can get there. And, that, and that is a huge thing. Some of you have gone through school and it was very easy for you. You were never actually really challenged. You always succeeded and it took very little for that success. If you want to be a genius in any of this, study. By the time you get done, you'll be, you'll, you'll be a genius because you have to get the facts in, and you have to put in the concept, and you make it. And that's something that I had to learn. It's something that I had to figure out for myself. So no, it works. It works. All right, I have jumped down to the assignments here. And you'll notice that there's a few little tests. So any of these that have a rocket ship next to them, and that is coming from the material. All these are actually old lectures and videos. That's why you don't see them. All of them are coming from this information. So once you get through this information, then you can come down and take a little test. This is an assignment worth 50 points. This is an assignment worth 50 points. That's an assignment. So we're going to look at those. And then finally, at the end of the week, that's where you'll turn in your notes. I shouldn't say in the room. Finally, when we finish that module, you'll turn in your notes, right? It might not be. Yeah, it's not a link at this point. And then I'll grade your notes. I'll look at what you wrote in there. And, and I'll, especially on the first few modules, I'll try to grade your notes really quick. That way you know, hey, I need to do more. Or no, I'm good. I'm going to just do the same thing I've been doing because I'm getting a good grade on it. Did anybody ever tell you I hate people? It's something I learned over time. Because you do have to figure out what you're putting your time into. Right? If you want to go into technology, you definitely should be studying it in classes. But let's say that you go into the next technology world movement, something like that. You have to take this for a good go. One of the things that people do that have been taking classes for a long time will look at that first assignment. And if it's a paper, that's the way it is. It's a, you know, a little writing thing that you have to do. They'll do a so so job. So they'll make sure that it's a so so. In other words, you could have done that, but you didn't. And so then you turn that in and you see the grade. I couldn't tell you the secret. <laughs> and if you get an A on it, then that's what you put into that class. <laughs> right? That's a little thing. Because you do, you will end up with I got a ton of stuff to do. What do I do? Should I not do this one or do this one a little less? Or how do I figure that out? That's that's the way I started doing it. I would just be like, oh yeah, here's a topic, boom, 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 here we go. Ooh, we got C. Okay, we have to up that next time. Oh, we got an A. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, well, five more minutes. So we're gonna take a look at an assignment. And so once I announce an assignment, then you should feel like, okay, that's the one I need to do. So I'll, I'll put dates on these, but again, I want you thinking. I want you thinking about the fact that, okay, we just talked about that. That assignment is due. I like students to think of this. What is your current grade in class? Okay, that's a you know, that's a scary negative way to look at it. See, a lot of times, teachers are always wanting to be positive to you. And they go, hey, everybody's starting to look around here. Can you trade around and come down? Not to me. I don't know. But um, that's not true. You haven't done any work. If you quit now, you've got a zero. So this is always the way I look at it. Always. I have a zero in this class. I haven't done any work. It's my goal to get an A. Therefore, if the teacher said, here's an assignment I want you to do, that's the one I need to do. And then my score will be an A. Because the only thing he's assigned is that. And I got it done, and I got it done well. Right? Once you get to that point, right, now you have 100. If you get 100, then it's 10. All right, so here's the thing. I include a link, uh, and we already had to look at this. But here's a link to everything we have at EAC, and we'll get into that more. But this is the Computer Information Specialist 
a suggested course plan, and this is what it looks like. And so at the first day, we had to deal with this because I said, hey, you should be in 118 if you're actually going to do this. So get into that class, right? Because I didn't want you to miss it and be next semester when you get class. So in this assignment, even though we haven't started all the educational things, even if you're not in this program, you are going to download this spreadsheet and I'll open it up in Excel. And you don't have to use Excel, but again, you have that online. You can. This is a spreadsheet I made. And what you're going to do is you're basically going to uh, go through and put when you're taking it. For instance, this is CMP 100, which you're in now. You're going to put fall. If you haven't taken this, right? Or let's say you did. And you say, I took that on the summer. And in that one next, so that's fall. Communications, so took that in high school, say, so that was, I don't know, I don't know. You took it before, I'm not so concerned about this. I don't know what you think you need to go on this one. So I just put, well, that was before, so that was in 2020. Haven't taken this one yet. Um, I'm not signed up for it, so I'll take that one on the screen. So really what you're doing on this little spreadsheet is you're planning out your education. Now we're going to find out later that universities and colleges use them. So any degree you could go to, like if you want to go to ASU, you could go out there and say, show me that degree and is this a course plan? You download that, it looks like this, and it tells you these are the courses you need, this is the ones you need to take. And it helps you to know, okay, I've got that, that's the plan. The goal is, is that you keep this. So you'll turn in a copy to me, but you'll keep it. And then that way, as you go along, you can say, oh yeah, okay, I'm taking that in spring 2021. Uh, we'll use curriculum related stuff. So that's down in the notes. I'm going to pick this a little bit. So on Friday, when you come in, we're actually going to have you in class to do this so you can answer any questions. So we're going to be going through this on Friday. And you can do it early. Some of you have been here for a while, so you know, oh, I've taken all this stuff. Let me go ahead and teach it. This is when I took it in 21. This is when I took it in this year. You can fill all that. This is only for these courses. Well, yeah, so this has English 101 on it. So yeah, you took that and you took it. So that's the idea of this. You're saying, this is when I took it, or this is when I plan to take it. And it really helps you figure out what you're doing. Yeah, you need to kind of stress. That's not what do you need to do before Friday? We really need to review stuff that we've been going through. What do we go This course differences between high school and college. So go through that information because, again, there's going to be some short little tests down here before you start speaking. But yeah, I'm looking for the main content. I'm not a teacher that's going to say, I'll afford to say, that's what you're going to do. That's not what we're going to do. These are the concepts. So you should expect the uh, difference between high school and college is selection. That kind of thing. So run through that information so that you can 
take those little tests that are done with us. And on Friday, we will do course sequence to put a major in here to have that done. We have to turn that in. And then we'll move on to um, study time. We'll probably not do that until we accomplish it. So we'll finish up that. Move on to career. Questions? To save what you got. And again, go to the Apple menu, go to shutdown, and that'll make sure you're out of everything. Right? That, that way, nobody will get into But you can just close the browser if you are okay with majors. People think they log out of that. And they're like, oh, I log out of that. And then they don't. All right, good to see you. If you have questions, please talk to me about it, and we will see you Friday. Yeah, we're one o'clock and one eighteen. All right.